let's go ahead and set this problem up, okay? So what ha what's happened is this. A person has absorbed some strontium-90, okay? And it ends up in the skeleton. And 50% of the energy of the decays is absorbed by the skeleton. The skeleton forms 17% 70, of the body mass. The question is this. What dose equivalent in sieverts will be received by the person's skeleton in the first month? So here's the situation. I have a certain amount of radioactive isotopes, and it's being absorbed by the person's skeleton, okay? And we want to know what dose equivalent it is. Well, remember dose, okay, which we need in order to find dose equivalent, is joules per kilogram. So first off, I need to figure out how many kilograms the skeleton corresponds to, okay? So the kilograms of the skeleton, it's 17% of the body mass, so 0.17, times the 75 kilograms of the actual person. So I end up with a skeletal mass of 12.8 kilograms. That's going to be an important number for us. Now, strontium-90, when it decays, it emits a beta particle with an energy of 2.8 mega electron volts. We assume that 50% of this is absorbed by the skeleton. So for each decay, there's 1.4 mega electron volts that's absorbed by the skeleton. But since Gray's is in joules per kilograms, I don't want this in mega electron volts. I want this in joules. So I'm gonna convert it to joules, and if I do that, I get 2.24 times 10 to the negative 13th joules. So each decay deposits this much energy in the skeleton, which has this much mass. Now we need to work out joules per kilogram. So we know how much energy each decay deposits. We know the kilograms of the skeleton. But another piece of information that we need is this. How many decays are there? Well, the number of atoms that decay is just equal to the decay rate, which is the decays per second, times the time interval. And the decay rate is given as 370,000 becquerels. That's 370,000 decays per second. Okay, so we have 370,000 decays per second times the time interval. Well, the time interval is, a sec is one month. One month, if we convert that into seconds, one month is 2.59 times 10 to the sixth seconds, assuming a 30-day month. So here's how much time we have. The decay rate is 370,000 becquerels, and so we can calculate the number of decays. So it's 370,000 times 2.59 times 10 to the sixth, and so I end up with the total number of decays is 9.59 times 10 to the eleventh decays. And now we're ready to solve. So first off, we're going to compute the dose in grays, okay? The dose is equal to the energy absorbed, and the energy absorbed is going to be equal to the number of decays, 9.59 times 10 to the 11th decays, times the energy per decay, and we worked out this, the energy that was absorbed in one decay is 2.24 times 10 to the negative 13th joules per decay, so that's the total amount of energy that's absorbed, and it's absorbed by the skeleton, okay? And the mass of the skeleton is 12.8 kilograms. So we have everything we need to calculate the dose. And if we do that for the dose, we get the following, 17 milligrays. And at this point, we've rounded off to two significant figures. I've been carrying around extra decimal places, but now we're ready. But the question didn't ask for the dose, it asked for the dose equivalent in sieverts. Now the relative biological effectiveness for beta particles, which are just electrons, is one. So that tells us that the dose equivalent in sieverts is just equal to the dose in grays. And so the dose equivalent is 17 milli sieverts. And let's do an assessment. 17 millisieverts is a pretty significant dose. Okay, the yearly background dose is something like 3 millisieverts, and so this is a significant amount of radiation. It's bigger by a factor of about 6 than the typical yearly background, and it's all absorbed by the skeleton. So this is a dose worth worrying about. But on the other hand, this was a dose that someone got by being exposed to the waste from a nuclear accident, so expect this to be a relatively serious process.
And this is comparable to numbers which we've seen in similar kinds of problems. Net result, our final result, matches our expectation of how the world works.